Shane, we've seen the articles about financial matters come forward in the newspaper from the middle to yep. near the front, yep. uh, particularly around Neil Woodford and the saga going on with his funds. What's your views, comments on this? It's it's one of those things, unfortunately, that it's it's not good news for anyone, really. He, Neil was definitely one of the flagship managers in the UK, had a phenomenal record at Invesco, uh, where we invested with him since the portfolio was launched, but we sold when he moved to set up his, his own company. Um, it's tricky. It's He was in an area that was getting low allocations, so the UK is probably the most hated asset class globally, and we got the issues of Brexit around it as well. Coupled to that, some periods of poor performance culminated in this situation where redemptions were continuing for, for two years. So it was um, it was not any news to anyone in the industry, but obviously when it hits the you know tabloid front pages, it obviously becomes a bit more wider known to the public. As you rightly said, you were invested in his mm-hmm. funds at Invesco. You've not been invested since he's launched his own funds. What are the reasons behind not investing in his funds? As you know, Brian, we have very robust and stringent processes. Um, one of them is the pretty process that dictates how we monitor and review funds. It's 30 different metrics within there. When he was at Invesco, scored extremely highly for, for the team around him, for the resource. Um, his performance was excellent as well. Moving across to Woodford Investment Management, um, you go through the same process. And those metrics scored extremely low. So the process said, do not buy. Whatever we might have felt personally about Neil, it was like, do not buy. And you have to stick close to these, these processes that they've seen as good in the last 15 years. Excellent. Thank you. You're welcome.